I want to do a follow-up to my video defending black Christians divisiveness threatens black liberation and the reason I want to do the follow-up is because people that I love and respect may have misinterpreted what I was trying to say or I may not have communicated properly exactly what I was trying to say. Now, if it was white people that had a problem with what I said or misunderstood what I was saying, I wouldn't be doing this video. Because most of the time, if I know that it's a white person responding to the videos, I tend not to respond to them at all because I'm not concerned with white misinterpretation as much as I'm concerned with black misinterpretation. My focus is black liberation. Everything else is secondary. But I want to give you a microcosmic example of how black interfaith communities can work together for a common cause. Now being a musician of many, many, many years, I understand harmony. So let's look at the musical scale so I can share with you information on basic harmony. Now on the musical scale, you have different notes. And notes played individually sound pretty good. If you play a C on the musical scale all by itself, there's nothing wrong with that. C sounds good, but if you play a C and a E together, you have two-part harmony. If you play the C, the E, and the G together, you now have three-part harmony. If you can harmonize on a musical scale, then you can use the emotion of love as a harmonizing tool among human beings. So if I give you the microcosmic example of my family, maybe you'll have a better understanding. Coming up, there were four children to six in the house. Four blood brothers and sisters in the house. But we also had foster brothers and sisters. But let's just talk about the four blood brothers and sisters right now. Between the four of us, one of us evolved into a Rastafarian. One of us evolved into a black power, black supremacist. And the other two remained Christian. All of us had clear differences of opinion. We loved each other though, so we never came to blows about our differences. The Rastafarian lived separate from the Christians on most occasions. The black power, black supremacist and myself lived separate from the black Christians and the Rastafarian. 
in most occasions. Now the Rastafarian and the black power, black supremacists were able to live together for some time because our views were closer. But it was hard to live under the same roof with Christians. But although we had differing opinions, when it was time to work for a common cause for one of our loved ones, we dropped our different opinions. We set those aside to take care of the common cause. And the sooner we dropped our differences, the sooner we were able to take care of that cause. But the more we focused on each other's differences, instead of going this way to take care of the cause and the goal, now we going this way, side to side, throwing them bowls, roughing it off for those of you in DC in my age group. We roughing it off with each other. but we're not taking care of the common cause because we criticizing each other's belief system. But whenever we set those beliefs aside, we were able to accomplish our goal. If we can do that on a microcosmic scale, then black people can do that on a macrocosmic scale. Please don't be confused. Please don't hear me saying that black people should convert to Christianity. But at the same time, please don't hear me saying that black people should give up their Christianity. We're all on our own individual path towards enlightenment. Some people will take the Christian path. When I first heard the so-called conscious community speaking back in the late 80s, as I said a couple days ago, black conscious dogma, if you will, resonated within me because it was something that I already believed as a Christian. And as a Christian, I would debate other Christians. But at the time, I was a black Christian liberationist. I was a black Christian abolitionist. So if the folks that I was speaking to outside of that paradigm were getting rid of all Christians, then I would have got done away with in that so-called ethnic cleansing process. So I have mercy on my black neighbors. I have patience with my black neighbors. We understand that most black Christians are white supremacists, but that's not saying anything deep and profound. Most people that live under white supremacy, no matter what they believe in, are white supremacists and practice white supremacy. I observed this 
this past holiday season or horror day season when some of the black Muslims that I knew practice all of the goddamn white man's cultural practices during the holiday season. But they were supposed to know better than a Christian, right? But because they live under white supremacy, they practice white supremacy culture too. Many of my black conscious brothers and sisters also participated in the white man's horror days. Now, of course, they would say they were doing it for a different reason. But that's the same as when a Christian says they're doing it for a different reason. You can easily explain your way out of a situation. But the fact is that people from all schools of thought in all walks of life that live under white supremacy practice white supremacy slave culture to one degree or another including myself I'm, I'm not perfect some things I've been able to get rid of and some things I find myself going back to only because of our lack of community I don't want to have to depend on the goddamn white man for nothing I've been homeless a couple of times and some of the homeless brothers taught me how to survive on the street one of them was telling me to get a little uh, hot plate get a pan get some rice and I'm like yeah doing this I could be independent where do you get the rice from <laughs> and that's what brought me back to white supremacy I said to one degree or another I know that some people are more entrenched in white supremacy than others but you go to your left there's white supremacy you can't even step to your left white supremacy in your face step to the right white supremacy in your face I'm somebody that's trying to produce food for our people and you can do it I started a community garden in DC's Ward 9 I know you can do that, but I met with much resistance in doing that and just doing that, fighting to get my community garden established. Who was I fighting? White supremacy. I had to deal with white supremacy. And if they come to try to take the garden away, then I'm going to have to deal with them again. So now I'm dealing with white supremacy to feed my own people. We shouldn't have to do that. Just like my brothers and sister and I set our differences to the side to fight for a common cause on that microcosmic level. Our people need to set their differences aside on a macrocosmic level so that we can get rid of this beast. This has been Daku Akabo Wakatu.